One of the plastic free swaps I get asked about the most is shampoo bars. So today I'm going to give you the lowdown on how to choose and use a shampoo bar. Like liquid shampoo, there is no single shampoo bar that works for everyone. Finding the right one for you will be a process of trial and error. However, armed with the information I'm about to share with you, you will hopefully come out of the equation with more trial and less error. In my experience, shampoo bars fall into two categories. The first is hair soap and the second is solid shampoo. So what's the difference? Well, it's in the ingredients. Hair soap is effectively cold pressed soap that you can wash your hair with. Take friendly shampoo bars for example. The ingredients are coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, some water, and some fragrance oils. Then compare this to one of their regular soap bars. The ingredients are coconut oil, olive oil, water, shea butter, and some fragrance oils. There's really not much difference there. Solid shampoo contains surfactant which helps bind oils and dirt and wash them out of your hair. It's also what creates lather. The zero waste path bars I stock use, all right, watch while I butcher these pronunciations sodium cocoal isethionate and cocomidopropyl betaine. I hope I got those right. Anyway, they also contain hydrolyzed quinoa protein, which helps with softness and color retention, a couple of moisturizing oils, vitamin B5, and some eco-friendly preservative. So you can see that the formulations of the two types of bars is very different, and the experience of using them is also different. Hair soaps like this one are the shampoo bars that come with a lot of disclaimers about adjustment periods. Advice you'll hear about this adjustment is that you'll probably need to wash less often, you might need to use vinegar rinses to condition your hair, you'll also be advised to rinse very well. The reasons given for this adjustment is usually a claim that regular shampoos leave a lot of buildup in your hair that takes time to remove. Look, if I'm honest with you, I think that's a load of nonsense. At the end of the day, hair soaps either work for your hair or they don't, and you'll find out very quickly which category you fall under. There's really no need to persevere for months waiting to come out the other side of the transition. They don't work for me. I tried for two months, but when I walked the dog on a windy day and my hair didn't move, I knew I was done with hair soap. I do have plenty of customers that love their hair soap bars though, so don't write them off just because of a bad experience that I had. Solid shampoo bars by comparison are really easy to use and there's no transition period. They're also gentler on colored hair. There's really nothing more to say about that, you just wash and go. There are some other trade-offs that you'll want to factor into your decision on which bars to try, and the primary one is price. There is a big difference between the two in this regard. Hair soaps cost a lot less than solid shampoos. They also tend to be larger bars, and because they're cold-pressed soap, it takes a while to use them up. Solid shampoos are more expensive, smaller bars, and they will run out more quickly. Using a shampoo bar is pretty simple. I always just wet my hair and stroke the bar directly on it in a few places. You then lather up. You could also lather in your hands and rub the suds on your hair, but you might use the bar up faster this way. If you want your bar to last as long as possible, you need to keep it as dry as possible. If it sits in water, it will dissolve, so make sure you have a place to store it where it won't stay wet. To sum up, when choosing a shampoo bar, remember to read the ingredients to figure out if it's a hair soap or a solid shampoo. Expect to pay less for hair soap and for the bars to last longer, but also be aware you may have to change your routines to make it work for you. Solid shampoos will cost more, but they're more easy to use straight away. And don't forget, if you have a refill shop nearby, refilling your bottles of liquid shampoo and conditioner may ultimately be the best option for you. I hope this has been helpful and that now you have a better understanding of what to look for in a shampoo bar, or if you used one in the past and didn't like it, maybe you know why and you can try the other type. Anyway, thanks for watching this little primer on shampoo bars and I hope to see you soon.